it, it's a real challenge because yeah. I have my personal perspective. Right. And my personal perspective, I cannot find supported by the literature. So I have to be honest about it. Yeah. And my personal perspective would be, okay, you go through perimenopause, postmenopause, and you gain weight. Mm -hmm. It has to be something to do with maybe FSH, uh, follicle stimulating hormone, maybe the decrease in estrogen. We know that when estrogen is lower, maybe people might decrease spontaneous activity. And then, of course, there's... Uh, estrogen receptors on skeletal muscle. But when you control for diet and training, we find that weight gain is not inevitable, mm -hmm. that it is not that all of a sudden you've hit menopause. And, and maybe there are multiple influences and maybe some people are more sensitive to weight gain during menopause than others. Mm -hmm. But could it just be an aging? It's just hard for me to wrap my head around because so many women say I hit menopause and I gained and weight. So I think this is also one of those associations. So we gain weight with age or we observe as we transition through menopause, there is a weight gain, but we do not know the mechanism. And so that's one of the things I'm really interested in. I don't think that it's not true, I but we don't know what's causing this weight gain. So I think it's a, I mean, I've seen it in myself. I don't think it's, I think it's a valid concern but i think we don't know what's causing it is it we know most americans are like we've already discussed um in this last hour do not meet physical activity guidelines we know our diets aren't the best we know what is it now 72 or 3 percent of americans have overweight or obesity so um is it lifestyle is it change in hormones and this is why we need and i think Scientists and government agencies are starting to recognize this. This is why we need investment in women's research. And you see that across, at the national level, at least on all the calls for, like from the National Science Foundation, the USDA, the National Institutes of Health, they are starting to prioritize research related to women and women's health because we really don't know. We don't know. And I would say that for physicians listening and for people that then go on hormone replacement, their weight doesn't go back. There is no if, and these are some of the things that I struggle with because hormone replacement doesn't necessarily change weight. It is not a standard treatment. Mm -hmm. Would increasing testosterone potentially increase lean body mass again and, and or skeletal muscle mass? I would say um, yes, but it's not... As simple as saying, okay, we have calorie restriction. We know that if we increase dietary protein to this, we expect to see this kind of weight loss um, because we have those studies. Right. We have those randomized controlled trials that control for diet and lifestyle. Right. So it's it's complicated. And, you know, we – so uh, with the randomized controlled trials, I think that's also complicated because when we recruit people to participate into research – it's often not the reality of most of the population. Right. So we don't want people who are taking blood pressure medicine or cholesterol. If we are looking at the impact of, let's say, increased protein intake on cardiometabolic health. But the reality is most people who are in the aging process are on some sort of lipid reg or blood That's pressure right. regulating drug. We don't, we don't want people who have undergone hormone replacement therapy. And I, this is speaking outside of my expertise, but as someone, I guess, thinking about hormone replacement therapy, people stopped taking, doing hormone replacement therapy for ages because they thought it was unsafe. So we have decades where research could have been done or observations could it's have true. been made, but the we don't. The Women's Health Initiative really changed people's perspective. But we don't, so we don't have the data. And I think a lot of the studies that are done, some of the things, reasons we exclude people are really giving us a subset of the population that we're conducting research with that isn't actually representative of our current population. So um, that's why it's really important to understand how studies are done, who, what are they including, what are they excluding before we start making conclusions and like sharing that across. Um, Would you say that there are certain foundational things from the literature that people could all do to maintain healthy muscle mass and weight? Um, I So I used to have a very clear answer on this. This is what happens when you 
uh, really get into the research. So it's I, not always black and white. Sorry. And now I have, um, I'm starting to think less about maybe body weight in general and more about muscle health. And it's, but without an easy, effective way to measure muscle math, mass, it's very difficult. Or muscle health. Muscle I mean, health. Because. And how are we defining muscle we health? We know from the MRI images that do exist um, in the in the literature, I'm sure in medicine you've seen a lot more than I have access to. When you look at a cross section of muscle from someone who is older or with obesity, you do see fat infiltration into this skeletal muscle mass. So to me, that would say it's probably then going to start causing a lot of adverse metabolic effects or increased disease risk. So my theory would be to prioritize healthy muscle, but to get healthy muscle, you have to think about what you're eating and how you're going to grow it and exercise it and feed it the things that it needs, which then should potentially change body weight. But I don't know, you know, in thinking of like the BMI controversy, I don't think it's just to have a BMI 25 and then your muscle or lower, your muscle is healthier. I absolutely agree with you. So I guess it's, I'm trying to separate vanity as I age from like physiology and like reality and, but you can't have healthy muscle in my opinion and based on the science that I've read without working your muscle and feeding it properly. I would agree with that. And I do think that we're at the cusp of various ways of training muscle beyond strength, hypertrophy, stability, all of the things that we think about. Mm -hmm. I, uh, you know, there are going to be various stim suits and radio frequency ways to contract skeletal mm -hmm. muscle. I think that we're going to start to see an increase in kind of um, technologies right. that will help people overcome this atrophy issue. I think we're probably in the very near future going to see medications 